This is a 3D scan of the subsurface of Victoria. It's mapped fault lines and granitic intrusions and it's just incredible to see. All these red blobs you see were once active magma chambers churning deep beneath the earth. Today many of these structures outcrop as granite and slash or granodiorite while others remain buried. The project that conducted the 3D subsurface imaging in Victoria is called the Geoscience Victoria Deep Crustal Seismic Reflection Survey. So I've disabled all the faults aside from the Moisten fault briefly to highlight something that I consider to be quite fascinating. Check out this blob of magma here. It stretches east, originating from the Moisten fault, before rising up through the crust. This pluton is known as the Ursuldon Granite, and it outcrops today just west of Ballarat. Years ago I was going to make a video on this, I even took footage that I can no longer find which kind of sucks in all honesty, but I had no idea back then that this magmatic intrusion came from as far as west of Ararat back then. It stretched an incredible distance before rising up through a weakness. It appears like when this magma chamber hit the boundary of where the Evoker, Paradise and Linton Fault sits, it exploited the fractures in the earth and began to rise up, where it now outcrops today. So this ancient magma chamber doesn't outcrop at all in far western Victoria, around the Ararat region. It's still buried beneath the earth. It only outcrops west of Ballarat. It travelled about 60 to 70 kilometres beneath the earth before it hit the Evoca, Paradise and Linden Faults and began to rise up and today the granite intrusion can be found just north of Lake Barambeet. There's no pictures of the granite available for me to use, unfortunately, which only compounds my disappointment that the original footage I took is now lost. But I figured this was fascinating enough to make a video on, because you don't really get to see the plumbing of the earth firsthand very often. What's even more interesting is the timing of all this. You see the Moisten Fault is one of the major fault lines in Victoria. It was created over 500 million years ago, during the Cambrian period, as a result of a dramatic tectonic collision. This was the moment when volcanic island arcs and oceanic crust were slammed into the ancient edge of the Australian continent, a massive event that fused two vastly different geological provinces together. I won't go too deep into this as I've made a video on it that will be released soon, subscribe if you want to see that, but keep the 500 million year timing in mind. Now the Moisten Fault plunges deep into the earth, so deep it reaches the crust mantle boundary with it dipping about 40 kilometers. So magma eventually rose up from the mantle using the Moisten Fault as a conduit. The Evoca, Linton and Paradise Faults are all major west dipping reverse faults within a Lachlan Fold Belt of central Victoria. They were primarily formed during the Devonian, 380 to 360 million years ago, long after the Cambrian Moisten Fault and reflect a second major episode of crustal deformation in southeastern Australia. These faults form during or shortly after the Tabarabra Neurogeny, a major mountain building event that affected large parts of the Lachlan origin. The magma looks to have formed in a back arc crustal anatectic environment, meaning its magma generated by partial melting of thickened, deformed crust in a back arc region, long after active subduction migrated eastward or shut down. This is a textbook case of tectonic inheritance, where ancient structures influence the pathways of later geological events. Now all of these faults are associated with gold deposition, but what's really cool is that the Evoca and Paradise faults are actually related to the Moisten Fault at depth. If we didn't have this type of 3D image, you'd never imagine that the three are related. Look at how the Paradise and Evoca faults branch off deep in the earth from the Moisten Fault. The Linton Fault, on the other hand, branches off from the Evoca Fault. So even though the Moisten Fault went dormant after the Cambrian, it was still acting as a major conduit for magma and gold-rich fluids to percolate into the Earth. Now I mentioned that the timing of things was what was interesting. This is because the magma intrusion itself used the Moisten Fault to ascend about 120 to 140 million years after this fault went into a state of relative quiescence. So during the Tabarabra Neurogeny, when subduction was occurring to the east of this region, the Moisten Fault still played a crucial role in magma and fluid generation, even though it was long dormant. But it's not just this that's interesting. It appears like the goldfields in Ballarat are also linked to the Moisten Fault. Look at this. At depth, we have these faults plunging and converging with the Moisten Fault very deep within the Earth. Four major faults intersect with the Moisten. This is a great example of how interconnected geology is. So what are we really seeing? Let's summarize this by looking at the bigger picture. We're seeing the Earth reusing its own scars. A fault that once stitched Western Victoria together became, much later, a conduit for molten rock, delivering it from the deep crust to the surface. 
And this isn't just a curiosity, it's a powerful lesson in how geology works. Ancient structures never truly die. Magmatism follows memory, and even long dead faults can shape the land above them millions of years later. So next time you stand near the Ursuldon Hills, know that beneath your feet is a frozen river of granite, which slowly pulsed its way from Western Victoria all the way up to the boundary of the Ballarat region. A pluton born from heat, pressure, and a half a billion year story written in stone. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.